I mean, you're always interviewing the Purple Valley teachers. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I get confused what yeah. I'm doing sometimes. Yeah, okay. Hey, this is Stu, and I'm here with John Scott because he's with us at Purple Valley at the moment. And we've come to the beach again because that's part of the life in Goa. And last year we were filming the Fundamental Foundations and Openers, I've got the name right this time, uh, with John, which is like super useful for getting everything in place for the Stenger Primary Series and also the ones to come. And we thought this time that we'd follow on from that and uh, pick out some of the key postures that are the most useful for accessing a bit of freedom and movement in those uh, other postures that are come. So like homework stuff really. So the ones that we're going to look at are Baddhakanasana and Virasana, and then a combination of those, that sort of theme. So can I pass it to you, John, to just explain what it is we're going to do? Okay, Stu. Uh, first of all, good afternoon again. <laughs> nice <laughs> to see you again. Yeah, thanks. And I think Stu's got rather a good memory there. <laughs> the fundamental foundations <laughs> and openings, yes. Um, it came to my awareness that... Uh, for, for us Westerners, going straight into the primary series, it seemed that there was something missing. And on the Fundamental Foundations and Openings uh, video, we mentioned that uh, yoga was, at that time, um, floor-based. Everything was sitting on the floor. There was no chairs or stairs or shoes. To tighten us up. To tighten us up. And so um, what we want to look at, as Stu said, some key uh, postures, because Bada Konasana, this is not Bada Konasana in the primary series. In the primary series, Stu, Bada Konasana is this posture here. Is the folded forward. Is the folded forward. Because a lot of people are stuck here, aren't they? Exactly, because there's some missing elements. And that's what the fundamental foundation and openings do, take us back to the, the missing foundations mm. of sitting on the floor. And so Stu was asking me, well, what would you do? And I said, well, down at the beach, you can just play. If you're sitting up like this, because your pelvis is naturally posterior mm. due to really tight hips, uh, buttocks, when you use that so as to pull yourself up, the earth pushes the feet towards you, mm. and the knee, the femur goes with the pelvis, it rolls into the, uh, the tibia. We then have medial action to medial action and the meniscus is then yeah, vulnerable. Bit of discomfort. Mm. That's the classic one. Mm. And so what do we do? This is, we need to be able to find a relax so that the hips aren't in that sort of sympathetic nervous system holding up in terms of fight flight, yeah. worried about them ripping open. Because you tend to round your back a bit here too if you're dropping back. Yeah. You, everything rounds over, doesn't and we, it? And we can't sit up because the floor's pushing. Mm. So, Get all we need to do is separate your feet. Yep. Dig a hole. So if we dig a hole, we can lower the feet and then just widen it out to you for, so yeah. that we can, our thighs will have something earth to go. Put our feet in the hole and immediately, oh. yeah, there you go. Nice. Immediately we can roll up. Yep. The femur can stay relaxed. The sand is... So if we put it, especially if we put it underneath air, come back down. Give a little bit more height, yeah. So nice. what the nervous system realizes is that when there's something supporting, it's like riving home, riving home to earth, and you can go, ah. And relax, yeah. And relax. Yeah, and you notice the difference straight away. I mean, we're, you know, faking it a little bit because we're quite open, John obviously more so than I am, but even with that much off the floor, there's still a bit of a holding thing yeah. going on. But like now, yeah. really well, feel relaxed. Because that's what's happening is that's going into yeah. that natural open yeah. position. We could also fold, fold forward. forward. If there was a restriction, hmm. let's dig a little bit more. more. If you dig a deeper hole... Oh. Yeah. Getting roots. <laughs> so maybe I've gone down too deep. <laughs> and then you can find that you can really fold forward. Yeah. And of course, we said the fantastic thing about the beach is that you've got ready-made props, haven't you? Yeah. You know, you've got yeah. all this stuff to play with. You don't need expensive bolsters and that. And by the time you've had a few beers, you're up for anything, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, that feels nice. Okay, yeah. So, so that is just so people can get a visual on this. If you were in a proper yoga shala, this would be the same. We've lowered the feet, feet. which in effect has in effect raised the seat relative to the Sit feet. Sit on a block, yeah. a bolster, 
put a couple of bolsters underneath Knees. there and then you're quite comfortable yeah. to sit with that vertical self-supporting yeah. spine. So it's the same, we're just moving the floor relative to us yeah. rather than us relative to the floor. But the nice thing is yeah. to realise that the bolster's the bolster when you don't make the earth connection. Yes, yeah. When we arrive home on earth, yeah. home, like planet earth, earth. we yeah. go, ah. Yeah. When it's actually, when you've actually got earth underneath you, mm. you can relax into the support of it. Yeah. That's what's important. If there's air, yeah. nothing supporting, we then have to hold up. Yeah. So we're still off earth, yeah. like we're still flying. Yeah, and you really notice the yeah. difference. Yeah. And so how long we, would we hang out here for? Are we reading a book or are we just sort of... Uh, we could be reading a book or doing a Focus 12 on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. watching the sunset. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then, so there is a complement. Mm. And the complement is, we must have our complement poses. Just as I said, this doesn't feature in the primary series. This is Supta 7. Yeah. Bhada Konasana is Ashto 8. Yeah. Yeah. There's another key posture in the fundamental foundations and openings that does not feature in the primary series at all. Yeah. That and that's is Virasana, isn't Virasana. it? So that's so the double going the opposite way. Yeah. So we could come back to our level floor again. We could sit into and f into Virasana and find that we can't sit down. That would be me. Yeah. I'm like on the hydraulic sort of. Yeah. Uh, so if we can't sit down, seat. then just make two channels. And then you can then sit into those two channels. Maybe put a little bit more underneath your bottom. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Yeah. So that's again nice because if you are tight here in the quadriceps that yeah. are going to stop the knee flexing, then again you tend to hold there, don't you? You tend exactly. to sort of... Uh, You're not arriving home. No. And a lot of people also have uh, problems across the front of the ankle, don't they? They totally. can't plant so our flexors It's totally enough. supported. Mm by earth under each little yeah. hole wherever there's a hole yeah put some sand under it yeah mold into it yeah and you've actually got a lot more flexibility than when you're working yeah. with props because yeah. props are only a certain thickness you can yeah. use a blanket and you can use that but actually this is the ideal yeah. situation because yeah. you can even like as you settled in say oh, okay actually i need a bit less now i take a bit of sand away exactly really easy yeah and you can still feel that lift yeah try that yeah. Because that's the action that the leg is actually trying to do. That's not, it's not realized that when you're in Tiryanga Mukha. So this is what we're doing it for in a way, as far as the primary series goes. Yeah, is mm. that we can then do a Tiryanga Mukha. Mm. But here we're really using that. If you, if you watch my quadricep work. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So you're really pressing with the whole shin and foot into the floor. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to extend the leg. Yeah. Because Tiryanga Mukha is the foundation for, for Pranchasana. Pranchasana. Yeah. Have a try. It's really, this, my, my seat is disappearing. <laughs> this is not, not what it's meant to look like. Yeah. But you uh, could dig more, dig a, a bigger I hole. Could dig a hole and bury myself in it. Let's try. <laughs> Let's put this Which leg lower. and see whether it changes it, Stu. There we go, put it in there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, now try. Can you sit forward? Yeah. Ah, oh, so that looks... Should have done my good side. That looks so much <laughs> better. Actually, it does feel nice. Yeah, yeah, I am up. Because it is that, and a lot of people will feel the same, that this bloody leg sends you over that way, yeah. doesn't it? And then you can't get your seat, so therefore you can't let go in the hamstring yeah. to actually bring the leg towards you. And we have to realize that Tiryanga Mukha is a half Virasana. Virasana. Yeah. yeah. And this is the key understanding is that this posture does not feature in the primary series. Yeah. And so in my own personal practice some of the uh, morning sits before I start my official asana practice, yeah. instead of sitting in Padmasana, which is the standard for, uh, yeah. for us, I sit in Virasana. Yeah. Because we don't, we hardly, but this is more Zen, Buddhist way of sitting. Way of sitting. Yeah. 
And a lot of people will feel, like for me, because this med rotation of the hip is much harder for me than the other way, that you start to feel the discomfort behind the back of the knee after a while. So but This is key. We yeah. need to have our complementary poses yeah. matching one another. Yeah. This is the complement to Baddha Konasana. Mm. And so if we can keep those poses, counter poses, in balance, mm. then our neutral is... Is going to be there. It's going to be there. Yeah. 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 Nice. And so for those people that, you know, say some, some teachers say, oh, you know, you shouldn't do homework. You should just do the, the sequence. It will sort it all out for you. I, I don't come from that angle. You don't come from that angle. As you say, you've got to have the, the fundamentals in place. And that really helps. Well, yeah? it's so easy to go home and sit in chairs. Yeah. It's so easy to come to the beach and sit on the lounger. If you go home, take the cushions off the f seat, yeah. sit on the floor, use them as a bolster. If you come to the beach, it, th what, it doesn't matter getting a little bit of sand on no. there. We can dig a hole and play. It's also that playfulness. Yeah. You're a little bit more relaxed. Everything relaxes a little bit more. And you'll find that the benefits are rewarding. Yeah, yeah. perfect. And so this leads us nicely into our other posture, wasn't it? Which was one of the sort of f fundamentals. I remember I posted an article that was about the sort of things that we've lost as the human race because of the fact that we got these chairs and yes. everything. And that was the idea that time's gone by, we would have needed to squat what? in order to go to the loo and everything else. And that's something that's been lost a lot, isn't it? So from there here, we can go into the squat quite easily, can't we? As the case may be. Yeah. I yeah. can see that your heels are raised. Yeah. So we could actually raise the heels even, even more. Even more. I thought I'd rather craftily placed myself so my feet were down in the hole, but there's no escaping yeah. the eagle eye of John <laughs> Scott. <laughs> so also you mentioned going to the toilet. Yeah. Um, that's lost. In my personal life, I still squat regardless of whether it's a Western toilet or not. I will you climb up on top. I climb on top. So it's your bloody muddy feet that I always see on top of the <laughs> toilet. <so. laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Do a, I do a little budgie jump. To get up there. I put my hands on the, so I'm on the side. Yeah. And I go. Why have someone's peed on the floor there? On the seat. Oh, on the seat. <laughs> I take the toilet paper, I clean the ah, seat. So it's all rather hygienic. <laughs> Don't let him pass you a sandwich. <laughs> so anyway. Um, hereditary, Yeah. my parents are Scottish, and my mum and dad went through the depression. Yeah. And so they used to sit like this in the dole queues. Yeah? You're kidding. And yeah. play jacks. Jacks? Or, yeah. Like you would see them in Thailand yeah. doing the gardening or anything. So that would have been an easy seat. Yeah, yeah. We can then put our hands in there and do a little bit more classic yoga. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've tried this sort of waiting for Lorraine outside a shop. Yeah. I think if I had a cap down, they would have been giving me some coins. I think they thought I was a complete nutter. Well, but it actually, it's quite nice to just, if you're waiting for anything, just to go down into a squat, isn't yeah. it? Well, when I was um, uh, supporting Finn in his football, my son Finn, yeah. and we're at the football f pitch at the match, I would squat on the side of the match. Yeah. These big... <laughs> sort of <laughs> big Kiwi bloke standing yeah. beside me looking at me and they go, how can you do that? Yeah, yeah. Because it's completely lost. They can't, they can't do it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. so what about that, the angle of the feet? Because we see that people that find this very difficult, sometimes you see the feet go way, way out. Do you feel that's a little bit unhealthy for anything? If, if you go really out, as long as the knee is following the same fo line. Follows the same line. Yeah. Because then we've got the kinetic chain, ankle, mm. foot, knee, yeah. hip, so I can take that up. Yeah. The, the forces are going through the joints. Yeah. If my knees collapsed in, in. and I wouldn't want to stand up. Yeah. They have to be out, yeah. over, and in line. Uh, but what about as we're going to then transpose it into, say, a Marici A? Well, if we go Marici A, remember, if we come back out, my little mantra was a Mauricio, this is half sitting. That's right. Half, half standing. Half sitting, half standing. Yeah. So the sit bone is off the floor. It needs to be 
in line. Yeah. If we take it out to the side and too far back, then that kinetic chain has an angle in the knee mm -hmm. and you don't want to put pressure in there. No. So if you go back to Dandasana, I can adjust you how Guruji adjusted me. Uh huh. Okay. Sorry, well, I am standing up. He, he literally put my hand like that. Yeah. Lent me like that, but not flop. Yeah, don't flop. <laughs> Bent I that. I was so relaxed. Yeah, like that. Take that. Can you see where this foot is? Yeah, underneath my ass, basically. You can feel that, can't you? Can you see yeah. where this leg is? Yeah. yeah. And supporting. then I can take you that way. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you got my thigh. That was fantastic. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm going to stand around there. Yeah. I take your head down. Now, your bottom's come up, hasn't it? Yeah. But I'm going to take that back that way. Yeah. So energetically, the sit bone is going to the heel uh -huh. through the kinetic chain. Yeah. So can you feel that? That connection. Yeah. 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 And that's it. Yeah. That's beautiful, Stu. That's cool. Another open up. Yeah. Good. Cool. Dash a lift. Or is it still never? If we uh, had dash her up. Dash her up. Yeah. But that's what I was trying. What I was thinking about is if you, if you were squatting okay. always like this. Yes. Then you've lost it for yes. this. Yes. So yes. that's one of the reasons I was thinking why you might want to try and develop that, f maybe ten degrees out squat yeah. if you can. You know, better than. Uh, or yeah. skiing parallel. Yeah. Skiing. If your feet go that way, yeah. you're going to end up on your bum. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The legs just go Because the yeah. skis just go out. Mm. So you've got mm. to try and keep the so you've got to try and keep those skis parallel. Yeah. Yeah. If you then take them in too far, yeah. you're gonna stop. Yeah. So Okay, and a knee injury in skiing is either mm. skis gone in, caught an edge, yeah. cruciate ligament. Yeah. Or skis gone out, caught an edge, cruciate ligament. Mm. Posterior anterior or meniscus. Mm. Those are the classic injuries. Yeah. So when, when you've got a ski up there, yeah. or that's similar to going. Yeah, or using your foot. Yeah, right, yeah. To move yeah. your. So lower that's leg. where we want that relaxed. Mm. We want that relaxed to go lotus. Yeah. So what we could do then is actually have a look at that. We could do a Janu, bolster up your leg in Janu, relax. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm just going to do this. If you have that little foundation there, it's you higher than the supportive leg. Got much bigger legs than him. I need more foundation. Yeah. Ah, that's my sir. Yeah. But no, the sand under your ankle. Yeah. So my, yeah. if you have a look, my leg is completely yeah. earthed out. So I'm doing a raised Janushasana. Yeah. All that's I'm going cool. to do is slide it in there. So there's no, uh, the mozzies are out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And we would do that sort of thing, wouldn't we? We'd put a, if that knee was floating in the yeah. air, we'd put a bolster under put it. Put a bolster under it. Yeah. So the whole idea is, you know, as we're saying, at the beach, relaxing yeah. into the, the foundation of earth underneath you. Yeah. And so you were talking about half-half on that, on that first video, didn't we? Yeah. We, we were talking about half-half, half-sitting, half-standing or one rotation one way, one rotation the other way. Which came from the squat. Yeah, so we were sort of here. If we all go to the left side, yeah? Yeah. We're then half and half. Yeah. If this right hip is tight and we're sitting up like this. That would be me. Yeah? Yeah. Then take that sand away, keeping your Janu side uh, elevated. Yeah. And you're down. Yeah. And that gives you a much more level seat. So yeah. now, what's, what's key is that often it's the question, can you describe Mulabandha? Yes. For me, Mulabandha is also a tying in of the sit bone to the sit bone. Okay. 
So when I was doing that Mauricia adjustment to you, yeah. my hand was taking your sit bone yeah. to your heel, yeah. but also there was a pressure sit bone towards sit bone. In, inward squeezing. Yeah. So I accentuate that here, mm. lift it away, yeah. tie it down. Yeah. yeah? Then yeah. make sure you're sitting, sitting vertical. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, feels nice. And again, you mentioned when we were sitting on Bhadakanas, and what would you be doing? Yes. <laughs> Watching the sunset. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> reading a book. Yeah. It's classic. So you could just have your book here and reading the book. Even yeah. in this sort of position. Yeah. Yeah. And we do see this leg featured then again in the second series, don't we, towards the end? Yes, but if I turn side on, yeah. I'm doing I'm able to do lateral. Yeah. If I want to do medial, I can do medial. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So there you're doing with just the lower leg. Yeah. Mm. And so when the lower leg is lateral, mm. the femur is medial. Most of us mm. guys especially have lost that femal medial rotation. rotation. Yeah? yeah. So that gives you the medial rotation. Yeah. But we also want to be able to have the control to make it midline. Yeah. And lateral. Yeah. Yeah. We need that whole range. Mm. Because of, I, I'm not sure, the gluteus maximus, that deep six is... Piriformis and its friends, as far yeah. as preventing yeah. medial rotation. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, there is the, if we're sitting this way, we just swap the legs over. Just like that, you said. Just come forward, just like windscreen wipers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's never as easy as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's you can really find an ease and an ease. That's yeah. what we're talking about, isn't yeah. it? And we're sort of looking for that ease in the practice, aren't we, really? You well, know, effortless ease or ease what they how they say it? <laughs> Something along that. Well currently I have a uh effortless effort. I have two groups. Yeah. My second group always tends to be I put my more newer students, let's say right. my beginner students. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see how the student brings the conditioning of work and life into the practice. Right. And we do currently live in quite a high stress society. Mm. And so when we come to the high stress society, we've got that real hardness. And if we think the practice is exercise, we come in and work harder. And so I'm, I'm helping people into Lotus and feeling that resistance. Yes. Here, as you said, we're just letting go. Yeah. And so it's one way to be able to go, okay, I can relax because I'm supported. When you're practicing on your own, you're not being supported. When you're practicing with the teacher, if the teacher's adjusting you, then you can surrender to the teacher mm. and help. The teacher then can help you go into the positions. And then if you haven't got the teacher, but you're at home doing the homework, you want to be able to surrender mm. or just arrive relaxed. Yeah. And so that actually is a real super important point as well. The idea is not that you're in it thinking, oh my God, has that been two minutes, three minutes, I need to get out of it. Yeah. But that you've, you're yeah. in something that's really comfy and your nervous system can just sort of chill out. Chill. Yeah, yeah. So to get that, you know, you can use as much propping as you want to get that ideal position where you can just let go. And um, yeah, thanks so much, John. And we've got some more too coming from the beach very soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. <laughs>